Okay, I'm going to start this video off by saying that I've never played a game where the players, and by players I mean survivors, feel so entitled to win without actually having to earn the win. Now, hold on. The reason I single out survivors here is because I play both sides equally. When I say equally, I don't mean I play one side 80% of the time and then I switch it up for a daily ritual here and there. Because I see people use that, oh, I play Killer 2 or I play Survivor 2. They don't really. A lot of these people don't. They just play one side. And just, just because they've played Killer a couple times or played Survivor a couple times, they, they throw out that they play both sides. That's not true. To play both sides, you, your Killer and your Survivor should be the same rank. You should switch it up nearly every game so you have a good understanding of the game. That's what I do. And I think, I think it makes you a better player. Um... But playing both sides equally, I don't get hate mail from killers. If I'm using infinite loops, broken shit, using a key, you know, any of that stuff. I don't get messages from killers. But with survivors, it's off the charts. Almost every game, even if you play completely fair, you're going to get hate mail. And it's... It's crazy. It's crazy to me to think that, that they're so entitled to win... Even if they make mistakes, even if, if it's not the killer's fault, they're still entitled to win. So, I also want to clarify that I don't necessarily think the changes coming to Spirit are that bad. That's coming from a Spirit main. Um, in fact, I agree with a couple of the changes. I think Prayer Beads definitely needed to go. But, with these people, instead of adapting their playstyle... To learn and improve, they just cry for nerfs instead because they want it to be a walk in the park for them. Survivors are the same people who complain that Dark Souls is too hard for the sake of being hard. You know, it's not too hard. People can go through the entire game without leveling up and still beat the game no problem because they learned and adapted and got good at the game. It's easy to scream broken and please nerf as a cop-out so that you don't actually have to learn and become a better player. Now... The problem with this is these entitled survivors are in complete control and have the devs by the balls. The reason being that there's no disconnect penalty. The new meta, whenever the survivor mob comes together and decides they don't like something, is they'll all just keep DCing. And the devs wonder why the killer is overperforming. They need to make DC penalties a priority so that they can weed out all these crybabies. I get that right now they're having a hard time detecting whether it's intentional, either disconnecting, but this, this needs to jump to the top of the priority list. People's main complaints about Spirit are so backwards and hypocritical. They say that she has little counterplay, leaving the survivors to guess and say it's a 50-50, saying there's no skill involved. Now think about that. Now look from a killer's perspective. I know it's hard for you survivor mains. The killer has to guess where survivors are, which gens they're working on, whether they're going to put a pallet down or not, whether they have decisive strike, whether someone has a flashlight nearby when they're going to pick somebody up. There's so many situations where the killer has to make a read. Right? Now survivors don't want, don't want to have to play that way. They just want to be able to see a killer at a loop and run in a circle and think they're amazing. Now, the conversation to counterplay is so funny with all of the unmind gameable infinite loops survivors have. Um, you have Auto Haven, Macmillan Estate, As this Crotus Asylum, um, even the game map. There's there's tons of great loops in the game. Um, there's no counterplay at all, other than just to break the palette, in which case um they make it to another loop and so on some infinites are just windows and lead straight into a jungle gym um so after you know three loops and the window gets blocked and they just keep on going this is an example um also the majority of these maps are massive and uh the killer is supposed to just quote unquote pressure gens that's what all survivors say uh, just pressure the gens uh so let me tell you why i think this is bad for the future of Dead by Daylight. Um, if every time a killer becomes viable against good teams, and the survivors have to adapt a playstyle other than pallet looping and BMing, they just go on strike, and the devs bend the knee. Killer is going to become so unfun that a big portion of players will either stop playing 
altogether, or they'll all resort to camping and tunneling and playing lame, because that's how they're going to secure kills when it gets to a certain point. And, you know, survivors aren't going to like that either, you know what I mean? Because they, they, if it was up to them, they would ban everybody who tunneled and ban everybody who camped, because everybody has to play the way that they want them to play. Now, it's like I said, it'll create people to play so unfun, and that's going to create so much more outrage from the crybabies, and it's just a never-ending cycle because they're never pleased, because they, uh, God, it gives me a headache just talking about it. Um, so, I say we make DC penalties the top priority of the game because we need to get the babies banned. We need to get the babies banned and force people who aren't banned to learn and adapt to become more skilled at the game. And that's how multiplayer games should function. This is just my two cents. Um, I think we need to ban... I think we need to ban uh, the disconnectors. And anybody who decides they don't want to disconnect because they don't want to be banned, they need to, they need to learn. Learn how to play. Quit whining. 